In this lesson, we're going to review word problems and how to solve them. First, let's, let's just talk about how do we understand the problem? What's actually happening? I would always recommend not only reading the problem once, but just kind of stepping back and then reading it again, just to kind of understand and grasp what is happening in the problem. So here are some tips on how to understand the problem. The first thing that, uh, the first tip I want to give you is to highlight important information. Then you want to always reread the question like I just said. Always uh, read it once and then read it again and read it as many times as you need to to really understand what's happening. Then we want to summarize the question in your own words. What is happening? What are we looking for? What's important here? And then the last tip. Our second to last tip, then we want to convert the question to easier numbers or money. So always take numbers and try to convert them into uh, more simpler terms. Okay, now the last tip. Connect, connect it with something that you learned in class. So try to connect it with another topic that you maybe have learned about in previous lessons. Okay, so these are some um, general tips to help you understand what's happening in the problem. Then if we look at solving the problem, here are some, um, here are some tips for you on actually getting to the answer. The first thing I don't recommend is if you can, draw a picture or a diagram to help you understand what's happening. Then show your work by writing down your steps. I know I emphasize this all the time, but it's really important because the more work that you show, the more you can process your thoughts. Then the last tip, estimate your answer so you can cross out wrong answer choices. So your SOL, um, a lot of the questions will be multiple choice. And most of the time, by just um, writing things down, you'll be able to figure out a way to eliminate at least two of the answer choices. Okay, now let's go ahead and try a problem using all of these tips here. The example says, Marcus walks one-fourth miles on Monday, 2.3 miles on Tuesday, and six-fifths miles on Wednesday. How many miles did he walk on these days? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and sit back, and I'm going to go ahead and read that again. Marcos walks one and one-fourth miles. In my mind, I'm thinking, hmm, one and one-fourth. What, that's one full mile plus a little bit more. And that's going to be on Monday. Then he's going to walk 2.3 miles on Tuesday. Well, 2.3 is about two and a little bit more. And then six-fifths miles on Wednesday. Well, six-fifths, that's an improper fraction. So I know that that's more than a whole number. How many miles did he walk in these days? Feel free to read this again if you need to. All right. So I'm just kind of going to kind of summarize what's happening here. So Marcos is going to take a walk. Maybe he's walking his dog. Maybe he's walking with a friend. But he's going to walk on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday in the same week. And we want to know, all right, well, if he walks the individual miles on those days, if we were to add them all together by the end of the week, how far did he walk? So there I'm just summarizing what's happening. Okay. Now I can think about converting my numbers. We talked about that earlier. Whenever we said one and one fourth is a little bit more than one. Well, don't we know that one and one fourth is, um, isn't that going to be 1.25? Usually we like working in decimals, but if you prefer working in fractions, you can keep that the same um, as it is. Now, six fifths is another fraction that I'm given. And six fifths is going to um, simplify down to, I'm going to write it over here, at 1.2. So you can see that I have all three of my numbers as decimals now. So that's a great way to um, start off the problem. Okay, now let's look at this. Could we draw a diagram maybe? Could we um, draw a diagram like you see down here? Sure. Well, on Monday, he walked 1.25 miles. On Tuesday, he walked 2.3 miles. And then on Wednesday, he, marked, he walked 1.2 miles. So that's kind of a diagram, and I want to know what's the total miles. So let's go ahead and solve it. Let's take these numbers and fill in the blanks with the numbers. 1.25 
plus 2.3 plus 1.2. I can even, um, so what I did there is I showed all my steps. I'm adding these numbers together. And now I can even go ahead and estimate it. If I look at that, if I look at just the whole numbers, I have a one, a two, and a one. So that's about four. And then you can see that what's left over is probably around um, uh, five or above, I would say. So um, my guess is my total is going to be four point and then something that's, you know, above five. And if we use our calculator and add these numbers, it ends up being 4.75 miles. So I was all, I was almost all right, or pretty close there. But um, it's always good to use a calculator just to double check yourself. But these are just some tips on um, how to, um, you know, solve word problems on your SOL. And you'll have a highlighter tool um, to use, which is very helpful. But um, you know, a great thing is just, uh, a great idea is just to really sit back and try to understand what's happening in the problem. That'll help you understand which um, operations and which mathematical concept to use um, during your test.